for terrifying. I should just hand over Ju to Julie for her intro. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Loveless, the other co-presenter, and I work at Worcester Polytechnic Institute in the United States in Massachusetts. Fantastic. So if I can have the first slide, Julie. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, just a few definitions, really. I think I think there are a lot of misconceptions about what engineering actually is and what it involves if you choose to study it at university. Um, and I think at the very, you know, we, we, we have a perhaps a slightly stereotypical view of an engineer is, is someone often a man wearing a hard hat or overalls or as a person who comes to your house to fix a washing machine. And I think it's good to understand that, that w what it really means in the real world. So at its most uh, simplistic is engineering is the application of scientific knowledge to solving problems in the real world. That's a sort of really basic sort of uh, definition. And it's the branch of science and technology. It's concerned with the design, the building, uh, use of engines, machines, and structures. But I think this last definition, I think, is 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 a really good one because um, engineering is a creative discipline. It's the creative application of science, mathematical methods, and empirical evidence to the innovation, design, construction, operation, and maintenance of everything in the real world from devices and systems and processes and all of these things that are designed for the benefit of humankind. And the actual word engineering is derived from the Latin, the same word as ingenious, that is the sort of root word. And I like that because I think it's a reflection of, of what, what engineers really are. They are ingenious and creative people. Um, so if I can next slide, please, Julie. So there's, there's a huge range of engineering disciplines that are available, and this is true both in the UK, where I'm based, and in the US, where Julie works. Um, this isn't a comprehensive list, but it gives you a good idea of the, some of the different disciplines that are available. I won't go into a huge amount of detail for each one, uh, some of which you will have heard of, so things like aerospace engineering, so if you're interested in the design and building of aircrafts and aircraft systems and avionics systems and things like that. Automotive engineering, as you know, the name implies, you know, to do with automotive, uh, you know, cars and engines. Um, biomedical engineering, which is sort of interdisciplinary subject covering, you know, areas of engineering that impact on sort of healthcare and biorobotics and areas that can support people with, with injury and so forth. There's chemical engineering, um, civil engineering, which is basically everything to do with the built environment. So that's sort of buildings and infrastructure and transport systems and roads and highways and bridges. Um, computer science, sometimes computer science can sit, for example, as it does at Bristol within, within the Faculty of Engineering. There's also electrical and electronic engineering. Um, some universities will offer something called general engineering, which will cover a range of different topics, and also something mechanical engineering, and that can cover a whole range of different sort of areas, such as automotive design, um, as well as areas such as robotics and so forth. So that's just a sort of quick run through uh, of some of the different disciplines that are available. If I could have the next slide. So the different, the other thing that you need to think about when you come to apply for a course are the different types of degrees that are available with engineering. And um, typically you can do what's called a bachelor degree. So that would be a three year degree uh, in the UK or four years in the US and leading to a qualification Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Engineering. You can also do bachelor degrees that would involve um, a year abroad uh, with, a, with a partner university. So for example, Bristol, we partner with over 150 universities globally. You can also do something called an integrated master's degree. So in the UK, that would be about four years. In the US, that would be a five year, leading to a master's level qualification. So it uh, enables you to do more advanced material. Some, some of that, particularly where I work, is very much informed by the research that we do. You can also do degrees with a year in industry. So in the UK, as I said, that would be called a year in industry. I think in the US, sometimes they're called cooperative degrees, where you spend a certain portion of your time uh, working uh, working in a company. You can also do something called joint honours degrees where you combine subjects which have similar uh, uh, sort of um, 
academic affiliation. Um, and most of these types of degrees will be accredited by different engineering and, and industrial bodies, which enables you to sort of progress to becoming what they call a chartered engineer, which is a globally recognized um, uh, sort of qualification uh, within the profession. If I could have the next slide. So the way the degrees are structured, this is very similar in both the UK and the US, very much um, about developing practical skills to ensure that when you graduate, that you're ready for it, whichever industry it is you choose to work in. The first couple of years are very much about building your knowledge of the core concept and approaches to engineering and once you move beyond that phase that's when you perhaps will have options to specialize your knowledge to much more depth so again those will be much more advanced topics they will be much more specialized again will be informed by research that's being done by the institution and the way that you'll be learning is going to be a combination of both theory and practical classes so the theory classes those are going to be a mixture of tutorials uh, and big lectures and the practical classes those are going to be a mixture of lab work computing lab work modeling lab work uh, sort of group and individual project work but also you may well do some field work so for example with our civil engineering degrees there's a, there's a significant amount of time that you spend out in the field doing sort of hands-on work if i could have the next slide and then in terms of sort of teaching and assessment, this hopefully provides you an overview of what to expect. So within an academic year, uh, students take what are called credits, so 120 credits in each year. And those are comprised of a combination of compulsory or mandatory units, which you have to study because they're core to the course. And sometimes you may have a number of optional units, which sometimes can be in subjects outside your main uh, degree subject. Uh, so those units are typically sort of 10 to 40 credits between 10 and 40 credits each you'll have roughly three to five contact hours a day uh, teaching hours generally run from nine in the morning sometimes as late as six in the evening but most within nine to five as I said those will be a mixture of lectures lab work written coursework essays and those individual and group projects. Um, so at Bristol, you do a lot of project work and some of that is very, very practical. So one of the group projects that you do, for example, in our mechanical engineering degree uh, is designing and building a prototype amphibious vehicle that can move from land through water. Um, and it, it involves using 3D printers, for example. In terms of the assessment, that's going to be a mixture of exam work and uh, sort of ongoing, uh, continually assessed coursework. And in the UK, um, Wednesday afternoons are always free of lectures to enable students to pursue their extracurricular passions, whether that's a sport, whether that's voluntary work, or perhaps musical theatre, whatever it is. But there's a, it's, it's, it's a sort of standard within the higher education system in the UK that Wednesday afternoons are always free of classes. Um, if I have the next slide. And this is just really uh, for, for my benefit to tell you a little bit about um, engineering at the University of Bristol before I hand over to Julie. If you haven't heard of Bristol, it's a beautiful city in the southwest of the UK, about 90 minutes west of London by train. And the University of Bristol is right in the heart of the city. Um, engineering uh, at Bristol, it's an award winning teaching institute. We have a, a 2,700 undergraduate students and about 800 postgraduate students. Currently the Faculty of Engineering at Bristol is made up of two outstanding academic schools which encompass a number of different um, undergraduate uh, degree options. Uh, we recently invested over £20 million into teaching and lab facilities um, and Bristol itself is home to a citywide 5G test bed. We have things like the Bristol Robotics Laboratory, uh, we have the Blue Crystal Supercomputer, we have an earthquake shaking table, uh, we have a virtual reality lab, some absolutely amazing facilities because we are a leading research institute as well as a, a sort of teaching institute. It means that students have access to these amazing world class facilities. We have a dedicated industrial liaison office and they help facilitate things for our students such as industry mentoring. So all new undergraduate students are assigned an industry mentor. 
um, or that, that, that follows them through their, their degree programme. Uh, and students can apply for internships and short-term placements both in the UK and increasingly overseas as well. Uh, and we are regarded as a centre for excellence, one of the biggest research councils in the UK, EPSRC. They've awarded Bristol more than £50 million in funding uh, for 10 different doctoral training centres at the university. So I think that brings me to the end of my section. So I'm now going to hand over to Julie to talk a little bit more about engineering. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Emma. I'll hand over the power of admitting students to the room. Um, they've been keeping me busy. Um, so yeah, I just want to do a little deeper dive. You know, when people they tend to think about engineering, they think about engineering um, ideas such as these massive um, Atlas robots that can go into really dangerous situations and do jobs that people don't want to do. Uh, we think a lot about the private space industry or these enormous oil refineries. Um, we might think of large scale civil engineering projects like suspension bridges or high technology uh, like smartphones and wearable devices and virtual reality. And all of that is engineering. Um, but I think there are other types of engineering as well. Um, and so I do want to encourage everybody here today to think about what else engineering looks like. Um, and I have a couple examples from my institution, but certainly these are projects uh, or projects like these are happening at institutions all over the world. Um, this first picture shows a sea turtle who had lost a flipper in a boating accident. And um, WPI biomedical engineers were able to create the first of its kind uh, biomimetic flipper. Um, another project that uh, students are working on on our campus is this idea of the ability to harness energy from kites, uh, from, from the wind by using kites. So we've all seen um, kind of these large scale wind turbines that generate electricity, but they're very expensive. Kites are not expensive. Um, so there's a lot of research being done on how we can generate more sustainable energy using less expensive materials. Um, another example of um, engineering is this concept of um, using natural resources to um, help us in our medical studies, right? A group of WPI students and faculty were able to look at the vascular structure of a spinach leaf and realize that it's actually very similar to the vascular structure of heart tissue, uh, except spinach leaves are much easier to grow and to do research on. So it provides a really accessible way to do this sophisticated biomedical research. I also wanted to talk about what might make a great STEM or engineering applicant. Um, and I think this may vary a little bit depending on where you're applying, but good engineers do have a global mindset. Um, engineering can be applied in all different communities around the world. So that interest in what engineering looks like in Hong Kong versus Namibia uh, could be helpful to you as you start to think about engineering. We're also looking for students who want to know how. Are you the kind of student that likes taking things apart and putting them back together? Uh, that might make you a good engineer. Um, we're looking for motivation, and you can certainly document your motivation. Uh, we'll see it um, assessed through your grades that you receive in your schools, but you can also share with us your outside academic motivation through your personal statement or your essay. We're looking for collaborative learners, uh, students who have taken strong math and science courses, and that course selection is really important um, when you're applying to schools in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's still important when you're applying in the US, um, but really taking strong math and science courses, being a creative person, um, and doing well academically are all going to make your application to an engineering-focused program the best it can be. I wanted to um, highlight a couple of the cool projects that students will work on, and you can see them on this slide. Um, that first picture is what we call a vertical greenhouse, um, and this was developed by some architectural engineers at WPI, so a way to grow crops and vegetables in a reduced size because you're growing them vertically instead of horizontally. 
Uh, we also had students working on a new type of device that would help veterinary surgeons operate on dogs' knees. Um, we have an award-winning BattleBots team from WPI, so if you like robotics, um, there is a whole industry of television programs where robots fight each other. Um, it's called BattleBots in the United States. It takes many different names around the world, um, but uh, that's maybe one of the more fun applications of robotics. And then this last picture is down in the Panama Canal, um, where we send our students to work on shoreline management um, while they're expanding the Panama Canal. So anywhere that you study engineering, you're going to be doing projects like these because that's what engineering is. It's all about innovating new devices and new ideas. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, why you should think about studying STEM. I say STEM and engineering kind of interchangeably. STEM covers science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, but most universities that have an engineering program have a STEM program as well. Um, so I think that um, at some universities, there's a lot of flexibility in your major, in the courses that you'll be able to take or your ability to design your major to be what you want it to be. I think in the United States, we do emphasize not just studying STEM, but also staying well-rounded by taking some humanities classes at the same time that you're studying engineering. I think wherever you go in the world, um, you'll if you're studying engineering, you're going to look for universities that offer really state-of-the-art research facilities. You heard about some of the resources at Bristol, and I think that's comparable at a lot of institutions. Um, although they're all going to have their special things that they want to show off to you when you're on campus. I think a great question to ask is about scholarships for international students. I know we have a lot of students from France in the audience today, um, but as you're visiting different booths at the college fair, please ask about the scholarship opportunities available for people from your country. Um, Emma already mentioned that you really do have the opportunity to do a lot of combined programs um, in, in STEM. Uh, so whether that's a double major or whether you're going to start working on your master's degree while you're still kind of an undergraduate student, know that that's a possibility. Um, and you will have lots of opportunities after, uh, during and after your degree. So engineering careers are very in demand. They tend to have very high starting salaries. Um, and you're working for companies that are well known all over the world. I also wanted to talk a little bit about engineering because it is often thought of as a male dominated field. Um, but I think that there are a lot of resources for women who want to study engineering. And I think that women um, who are interested in studying engineering are probably used to, um, you know, advocating for themselves. But at our universities, um, there's going to be workshops for women in STEM. There will be networking opportunities where you can connect with other women in the fields that you're studying. Um, you might be able to do mentorships um, from women who are in the industries. And then there could be scholarship opportunities specifically for women. I also put these two logos here. This is the Society of Women Engineers, which is a very common organization on college campuses in the United States, as well as women in computer science. So different clubs and organizations to get involved in as well. Uh, I mentioned that you'll go on to work for really respected names in the industry. I'm sure you see names you recognize on this slide. Emma and I talked, and these are companies that graduates from both of our institutions will end up at. And then I'll just give my little um, plug for WPI. I've been at WPI almost nine years, um, and I really love what we do at WPI. We're in Worcester, Massachusetts, um, which you can see on the map is about an hour west of Boston, three hours north of New York City. Um, all of the projects that I showed you throughout the presentation are projects that our students have worked on because we are a school that definitely focuses on hands-on project-based learning. Um, and our campus is a nice size. We're about 4,700 undergraduates. There's another 2,000 graduate or PhD students. 
And we have 9% international. So students from over 70 different countries represented at WPI. This is our cute mascot. His name is Gompi and he's a goat. Um, and then the other numbers up there are pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I'm going to pause there. I know there have been some questions in the chat. If you do have questions um, that you want to ask, you can do it either in the chat. Um, you might be able to unmute yourself. I'm not 100% sure on Google Meets, but we'll work through it. Thank you, Julie. Yes, there have been a few questions coming in. I think I've answered all the ones that have come in so far, but obviously if there's anything that anyone that I haven't covered or if you want to talk, uh, uh, me to talk about in more depth, do let me know. Um, I don't know, Do um, is someone asked a question about the Option Internationale. Is that something they accept at WPI, Julie? Yeah, so yes, we um, we consider kind of all flavors of the French baccalaureate to be definitely eligible for admission to WPI. Fantastic. And yes, Franklin, we do accept OIB students who are studying in France as well. We, we accept a whole range of international qualifications. So, and I'm sure this is, will be the same for WPI. We have country specific pages, which will go into detail about all the different qualifications that we accept. Um, so yeah, do, do check out the website or f come and visit us in our booths. That's probably the easiest thing. And we can go through all the different uh, qualifications. There's a question that's come up um, about which engineering program looks more at energy, specifically sustainable energy? Um, and actually, there's. Um, I'll just talk briefly about the ones at Bristol and then I'll hand over to Julie. But certainly things like some of the specializations we have at Bristol would sit within electrical and electronic engineering. For example, smart grid technology, uh, that's one area. Um, things like developing uh, really optimal solar cell technology, for example, that's something else that you would cover in electrical and electronic engineering. But then, of course, if you're looking at things like wind turbine technology, that is is something that, that you might study within uh, broader mechanical engineering, because obviously it's about sort of nuts and bolts of the design. Um, so we're sort of checking the, 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 the course content because some, some specific sustainable technologies will sit within specific disciplines. But sustainability more broadly, civil engineering, anything to do, as I said, with the built environment, you know, that, that's about building homes that are energy efficient. Um, it's about building transport systems that are, that are green and that can sit within civil as well as mechanical engineering. Did you want to add to that, Julie? Yeah, the only um, other flavor of engineering that I know we offer at WPI is something called environmental engineering. So, but I think everything that you said, Emma, was um, was correct and, and all kind of flavors. Of, I mean, there's a lot of research about renewable energy right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the thing about engineering is, is it increasingly it's quite interdisciplinary. So you'll see sort of topics that will be covered, you know, within a course called environmental engineering and, and so forth. So that, that there is a there is a little bit of crossover. Um, I can see that somebody's raised a hand. Letitia, would you want to speak? <laughs> um, hello. Yes, I was wondering if I could ask a question. Sure. Um, I was wondering if it was possible to do, do like an engineering degree and a sideways to do like a business thing, like like engineering business, not really a business, but like a course or like next to it. Like so in the well i can i speak for sort of bristol we we don't do the, the the joint honors programs that we do are typically in in engineering so you can do mechanical and electrical engineering you can go can do computer science with electronics um not a joint degree in engineering and business i don't know whether that's um you can do a, a small number of options like sort of 10 or 20 credits perhaps in business alongside your engineering engineering degree but in the UK we're much more specialized much earlier on in the degree um, I don't know whether you wanted to yeah the US I think is maybe a little more flexible you can usually double major we call it double majoring you can double major in any subjects that you want to so you could absolutely do an engineering in a business program it's a lot of work though I'm not gonna lie I uh, <laughs> ready to take it all on um, can I add something to the question? Sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but like usually engineering, uh, usually um, we start 
uh, usually engineering is a sort of way like to start as an employee so if you want like to like in the future very very future if you want to go up without inventing so that's why i was asking you a question like so we can like kind of play with the thing what if I could just plug something else for Bristol, um, we do offer degrees with innovation. So you can do an electrical engineering degree with innovation, and that's very much aimed at students who want to become entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, they want to set up small businesses. Bristol actually has um, a, a world leading um, small business incubator. It's It's been voted the world's best several years uh, in succession. Uh, and we very much welcome people who are, who are sort of innovative and inventors and entre entrepreneurs and you can actually do degrees that very much support that that kind of thinking and that kind of creativity so um, as I said do come along and have a chat if you're interested in things like that okay thank you thank Good you luck. and I know it's 9 55 so I think our uh, meeting time oh it's not 9 55 for you all it's 9 55 <laughs> Um, but I think that's the end of our session. Um, so if there's any questions that we didn't answer, and I know there were some specific ones that did pop up, please, please come see us in our booths. We would love to uh, chat with you there. So thank you so much for, for joining everyone. Yeah, thanks so much for coming to our session. It was great to see you all. And yeah, do come along and have a chat and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, I have to figure out how to stop recording. Hang on. Ah, there we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm now going to leave the call and head back to my booth because I can I'll see it see filling you up. There. Yeah. Great presenting okay. with you, Emma. Thank right. you. Yeah, you too, Julie. All the best. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. you. Too. Bye. Bye-bye.